Hi there, I'm Julie, and we're taking inspiration from the Autry Museum's collection and showing you how to make crocheted objects that you can use at home. For this project, we were inspired by objects in the Autry's collection, which represent sunsets, such as this undated painting by Albert Bierstadt, Sunset on the Plains. These late 1800s to mid 1900s lantern slides by F. H. Maud, and this early 1900s lantern slide by an unknown photographer. You can find more representations of sunsets on the Autry Museum's website through the online collections database. For our crochet project, we'll use the colors of these sunsets to inspire a mug cozy, which you can use to keep your coffee or tea warm and to protect your hands from the heat. I'll demonstrate how to make the mug cozy and then you can create your own with whichever colors you like. For this project, you'll need worsted weight kitchen cotton yarn in six colors with one color darker than the others. Save this darker color for the border and button closures at the end of the project. You'll also need a G hook, which is a four or 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, as well as scissors and a tapestry needle a sewing needle, thread, and a button around three quarters to one inch in diameter. In this project, we'll be making three separate squares, joining them, putting a border all the way around, and finally making the closure with this button loop and the button. So to start, We'll make a slip knot, which is how you begin most crochet projects in which, in which you work in rows. Using a medium color of yarn on the bottom of the sunset, you'd make a slip knot by crossing the tail end over the ball end of the yarn and then drawing the yarn through the loop from the yarn ball side. The loop we've created is referred to as the active loop, and through the yarn changes as we move through the pattern, we'll always have this loop until the end of the project or when we fasten off. To start this square, you'll need to make 13 chain stitches. For a chain stitch, insert the hook into your active loop yarn over or lay the yarn over the hook from back to front and use the hook to draw the yarn through the active loop. As you're drawing the yarn through the loop, you rotate the hook down toward you so that the hook points toward the pointed part of the loop. It's easier for the hook to slip through the loop that way. Let's try another chain stitch. Yarn over the hook, rotate the hook downward, and draw it through the loop. And now you'll make the rest of the 13 chain stitches. Looking at the chain, there's a front and a back side. The front side has two strands of yarn forming a V on its side. The strand that's closest to you is called the front loop. The strand that's further away is called the back loop. If we turn the chain over, you see that there are bumps running down the center of the stitches, and these loops are called the back ridge. These names are important to know so that you can place your stitches in the designated place. For row one, which we're about to start, we'll be working in the back ridge. Working in the back ridge results in the bottom edge of the crocheted piece looking the same as the top edge. Let's begin row one. In this row, we'll work all single crochet stitches in the back ridge of the chain. So skipping the last chain stitch that we made, this one, we'll be working a single crochet stitch in this 
second chain from the loop. Insert the hook under the back ridge. Now yarn over from right to left and draw that yarn back through the chain stitch. You'll see there are two loops on the hook. Yarn over from right to left or from back to front. Draw the yarn down and draw through both loops. And we'll continue to make single crochet stitches across the chains that we made. We'll insert the hook under the next back ridge. Yarn over and drop that loop back through the back ridge. Two loops on the hook. Yarn over from back to front, turn the hook downward and draw through both loops. Now continue making those single crochet stitches in every chain all the way down. And when you get to the last stitch, we'll insert the hook into that back ridge, yarn over and drop a loop. And now cut the yarn, leaving a long tail, usually four to six inches. This is a little bit longer. And then we'll take our next color yarn And leaving a long tail again, four to six inches, draw the yarn through the two loops. Now we'll need to make a turning chain. And because the next row will consist entirely of double crochet stitches, our chain will mean two chain stitches. We'll turn our work and start working double crochet stitches down this row. To make a double crochet stitch, you yarn over, insert the hook under the front loop and the back loop of the single crochet stitch from the row below. And then you yarn over and draw that yarn back under the two loops from that single crochet stitch. You'll see that you have three loops on your hook now. Yarn over again and draw through two of those loops. Yarn over again and draw through the remaining two loops. Let's try another one. Insert the hook into the next stitch from the last row under the front loop and the back loop. Yarn over and draw that yarn back through the stitch Oops, I made a mistake. You have to yarn over first and then insert the hook into the stitch. Draw up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Let's try it again. Yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two loops, yarn over, draw through two loops. Continue on until you get to the end of the row. Great, so here we are just before working the final double crochet stitch. And we will insert the hook into the last stitch, drop a loop, and yarn over, draw through two. We're gonna change the color, so we need to stop there, get our new yarn, or new color of yarn, leaving a nice long tail. Also make sure to cut this yarn, the last yarn, and yarn over and draw through both loops. Pull on both tails to make sure that the connection is secure. And then chain one, 
It's a turning chain because your next row is going to involve all single crochet stitches. Now this color is just a subtle change from the last row. Insert the hook under the first stitch there, which is the front and back loop of the double crochet stitch. And you're going to yarn over and draw that loop back through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through both loops. We'll do it to the next one as well. Go under the front and back loops of the next stitch, yarn over and draw that yarn back through the loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through both loops. And you'll continue making single crochet stitches all the way down this row. When you get to the last stitch, you'll insert the hook as usual, draw up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Now, instead of using the same yarn, we're going to change the color for the next row. I'm using pink, leaving a nice long tail and cut a nice long tail here as well. Draw the yarn through the two loops, tighten the tails and chain two because the next row is going to involve all double crochet stitches. Turn your piece over, yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, front loop and back loop, yarn over and draw back through the stitch, three loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. And continue with those double crochet stitches all the way down the row. So you'll finish this row and before you get to the last stitch, you're going to change colors to whichever color you've decided to use next. Chain one to turn and work single crochet stitches in the next, the following row. So you can see that we work a single crochet stitch row, a double crochet stitch row, a single crochet stitch row. The pink one is a double, and then this peach one is a single. We went double, single, and then the final row, which is row seven, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll work an extra after row seven. We'll work an extra row, which is another single crochet stitch row. And in this row, we're going, we're not going to need to change colors. So we'll insert the hook into the final stitch, draw up a loop. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over and draw through both loops. And then you fasten off by drawing the end through the loop. When you draw on this, you pull on this tail, you can see the loop shrinks around the tail and it's secure. So once you've made three squares, then it's time to weave in the ends to finish each of the squares. To weave in the ends, you take one of the tail ends and thread it into a tapestry needle like this. Insert the needle under at least three or four or more strands of yarn. I like to do many stitches, maybe five or six stitches, and draw that tapestry needle so much that it even tightens the row a little bit. And then you want to pull on the row itself to make sure that it's not too tight. Now you're going to turn it around, skip one strand of yarn, 
and go under the next strand going the opposite way. I go almost to the end there and draw the yarn through. Again, go too tight and then pull on your work to make sure it's not too tight. Now I'm going to do it one more time going the opposite way. So it's three times back and forth. Just a little too tight and then tug on the crochet. Now you can cut the yarn very close to the crochet, but make sure not to cut the crochet. And you've woven in one, one end. Now you'll do that with all the remaining tails. There are quite a few in this piece because we've changed the colors so often. Once you've finished weaving in all the ends, you need to arrange the squares how you would like them to be for the cozy. You can see all of these three squares I made the same way, but for the center one, I turned it upside down because I wanted a little bit of movement between the three images of the sunset. So now we're going to work the sides, the shared sides of these squares, the ones that are a little bit uneven, you can see. And we're gonna put a row of single crochets across it. So we'll take our the darkest yarn that we have for our sunset and we're going to drop a loop here in the corner, stitch, just pull a loop through, but leave a, a nice tail as usual. We're going to make a chain and then we're going to make a single crochet stitch in the same place. Now um, you'll see that this single crochet stitch is at the end of this row of single crochet stitches. For the row of double crochet stitches, we're going to put two single crochet stitches in, in the side. One and two. And then because we have another row of single crochet stitch, we'll work one, oops, we'll work one along that side. And so for every row of double crochet stitches, it's two stitches on the side. And for every row of single crochet stitches, it's one stitch on the side. And the main thing is just to try to work as evenly as possible. There's no such thing as perfection in this particular um, way of working down the side of a piece of crochet. Here we go. And we got one at the end. Then we're going to cut the yarn, leaving a nice tail as always. Oops. And fasten off. And we'll do the same just to the shared inner sides. So not these two sides, just one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now we have the inside sides um, covered with our row of single crochet stitches. And now we'll need to sew them together. So we're going to sew them together like that. I'm going to use these two here using the tail that you left, um, in, insert it into your tapestry needle, and we're going to sew it through the uh, front loops only. We can hold our piece like that, and then I'm going to insert the needle that way. Um, 
I just threw the outside loop there. And then we're going to go on this side through the outside loop. Oops, there we go. All right. And then we're going to go up to the next outside loop and go across to this outside loop. And go back and forth in sort of an S formation. So snake your way back across these two squares, the join. There's one. And there's the last one. And so just like weaving in the ends, we're going to um, go under and make sure you stay with the same color, but go under several loops of your um, stitches and then go back and forth three times. until all of the squares are sewn together. So now we've pieced our three squares together. We'll need to make a border for the entire piece starting at the upper right corner. So still with our darker yarn, I'm going to draw up a loop in this corner stitch and make a chain and a single crochet stitch in the same place. and we'll work all the way across this row. One single crochet stitch in each stitch. When we get to the corner, we're going to work a single crochet stitch, one chain stitch, and another single crochet stitch. And then we'll work down the left side here and it resembles what we did here, but we'll just put one row of single crochet stitches. And then again in the corner, it's a single crochet stitch, one chain and another single crochet stitch. We'll work all the way back until we get to this bottom right corner. Okay, so now we've made the border on the three sides, the top, the left side, and the bottom. And we're at this corner here, the bottom right corner. We're going to, um, we made one single crochet, we're making our chain, and another single crochet in the same stitch. And we're going to work our way up to where we started the border. So we're going to do the same thing as before, where if it's a row of single crochet stitches, we only put one single crochet stitch on the side here. Um, if it's a row of double crochet stitches, we're going to put two stitches on the side.
And then once we get to the end of this row, we are not going to cut the yarn, rather, we're going to start working on the closure. So we wanna go into this last stitch and then we'll chain one and turn the piece. Once you've done that, we're gonna do a new stitch, which is called a decrease or single crochet two together. To make a single crochet two together decrease, we insert the hook, skipping the chain into the next stitch and draw up a loop. And then you insert the hook into the following stitch and draw up a loop until you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all three loops. And then we'll single crochet back until we get to the third to last stitch. So we can see there are, let's see, there are one and two stitches left. So yeah, now we're third to last, we're going to single crochet two together here. So insert the hook into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Insert the hook into the following stitch and draw up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all three loops. And we're going to chain one and turn. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're over the first two stitches, we do a decrease. And then single crochet until we get to the last stitches, the last two stitches where we do another decrease. So we have two stitches left here and we're gonna work our decrease, drop a loop in the next stitch and then drop another loop in the stitch after that and draw through all three loops. So chain one, turn, and we'll do it again. This is how we're making um, the slant of the button closure. And here's our decrease. Now once we've done that, we'll have six uh, single crochet stitches on this row. Um, at this point, we'll need to um, see how big our, our button is. I've chosen this button for this project and We'll probably want to test it on a mug that this might be used on. Um, you can see this is a standard mug here. Um, and this fits nice and tightly around. So if you've already made one, you could of course use that as uh, something to compare it to, but otherwise, Wrap it around a mug you have. And you wanna pull really tightly, get a sense for where your button should go. See these, if I pull it really tightly, they can almost touch. So I can really put my button well into this fabric. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I turn my piece again and I'm going to slip stitch to the last uh, stitch of this row here underneath where I am now. 
And so to slip stitch, you draw up the yarn until you have two loops on your hook. And instead of finishing off like a single crochet, you draw the top loop through the bottom loop. And now you'll cut the yarn, giving a little bit of a tail. And fasten off. So again, um, you'll want to take your mug and measure to see where that button may go. And then you'll sew the button on accordingly using a thread and needle like you usually do for sewing. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy your Autry Museum inspired mug cozy. See you next time. The Autry Museum of the American West thanks our members and supporters.